All right, just gonna do a video on how Calvinism destroys any sense of personal responsibility and personal accountability for your own actions and your own sin and your own mistakes. Okay, why do I say that? Well, because by the logic of Calvinism, if you commit a sin, you can just blame God since you have no free will. Okay, if God controls everything, if you if you have no free will to do right or wrong, because Calvinists believe in total depravity that man is totally depraved and he has no will to he has no ability to do right or wrong. Uh, if that's the case, then you can just blame God for your actions. That's when you really get down to it. Calvinism, Calvinism destroys any sense of personal responsibility and, and accountability for your own slip-ups and your own sin and mistakes, like I said earlier. Human nature causes us to want to blame someone else for our problems, and Calvinism helps only to feed this fleshly humanistic nature. So let's get right into the scriptures on personal accountability and how the Apostle Paul and the prophet Isaiah and the preacher in Ecclesiastes Contra basically contradict John Calvin's false doctrine. Romans chapter 14, verse 10 to 12. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So that every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. The Apostle Paul apparently had, had some disagreements with John Calvin on that. But I, I intend to believe what the Apostle Paul said over John Calvin. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10 to 11. Prophet Isaiah seemed to also disagree with John Calvin on this, on this matter. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10 to 11. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, for it shall ill be with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. Notice that. The righteous, what they do, the reward is given to them. But the wicked, what they do, you know, it's held against them and whatever reward they get is given to them. Why? It's personal accountability. See right there, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah is teaching personal accountability. You know, if you do righteous, you're going to get a blessing. If you do wickedness, you're going to get the reward you deserve. But it won't be good. Okay? You, you don't get to blame God for your own problems. It's like, it's, saying, it's no different than when some people blame the devil for their own problems. No, it's not to say that the devil can't you know, be involved. I mean, there definitely can be some cases where the devil is trying to hinder and tempt and, and cause younger brethren to stumble or cause weaker brethren to stumble. But in many cases, if you struggle with sins like lust or whatever, it's mostly just your own flesh. It's not the devil. Now, again, there, there can be cases where there is Satan trying to, trying to hinder the Christian. But in many cases, it's your own flesh. And in many cases, you know, you're accountable for your own actions. You don't get to blame God. And many times, you don't get to blame the devil in most cases. Now, there are some, there are some cases where Satan is the blame, but in many cases, you're accountable for your own actions. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, sorry, chapter 11, I do apologize. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9. The preacher in Ecclesiastes also happened to disagree with John Calvin as well. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in, thy sight, in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou, for, the, for, all, for sorry, that for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. You know, you can live how you feel like living, but God will bring it into judgment. Okay. Now, again, I'm not good at reading things on a computer; just the flickering screen is not good. But we see there that the, the preacher in Ecclesiastes is contradicting John Calvin. Okay, you can walk in the ways of your heart, the sight of your eyes, but these things God will bring into judgment, like it talks about there. Now, Ecclesiastes, the preacher in Ecclesiastes, further contradicts John Calvin. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 to 14. Let's see what he says there. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. There would be no reason for God to bring it into judgment if you're totally depraved and you have no ability to do right or wrong. See, Calvinists destroy any kind of personal accountability because if you're totally depraved, you know, if you have no ability to do right or wrong, then you can just blame God. Well, God may be that way, so why am I being punished? You know, that's what it does. That's why Calvinism is an attack on the righteousness of God because it destroys your own responsibility for your actions. You know, it's the same thing when someone tries to say, oh, peer pressure or this or that. No, you don't get to blame somebody else. It's our human nature that causes us to blame somebody else for our own mistakes and our own faults. It's that simple. So, Calvinism only feeds the fleshly human nature and feeds this atheistic, humanistic philosophy of blaming God for your problems. That simple. So don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.